Hello, everyone. Um, good morning. I hope everyone had a safe and lovely Diwali. Uh, I think we've waited for five minutes. Uh, we should begin with the session now. Uh, so this is Harsha Bansal, and I graduated from St. Xavier's College in the year 2020. And I've been pursuing actuarial science since then. I've cleared nine actuarial papers. And I've also been working with WTW for the past four, over four years. And um, I've been working on the life insurance side. Yeah, that's a quick uh, introduction about me. And before further ado, let's begin the session. And I'll be taking the session on how to ace your actuarial interview. Uh, before that, I'd like to check the audience. Uh, do we have any um, experienced people or are is everybody a fresher? Or do we have a mix? Since we have just eight, seven of us, actually six of us. So can we quickly go around and check? If you're a fresher or an experienced person, uh, I can see Isha first on my screen, so you can go first, maybe. Uh, what about you, Gaurav? Actually, I think if if anybody who's not a fresher can raise his or her hand. OK, assuming none. Cool, then I'll begin. I'll quickly share my screen. Uh, let me know when it's visible. Can someone please confirm? All right. Guys, I understand it's a Sunday morning, but I want this to be a little interactive. So I hope you'll uh, pay attention and be interactive for the next 30, 40 odd minutes. I'll not take much of your time. Cool. So quickly brushing through the agenda, uh, I'll, I'll be discussing what's the need of an interview, how do we prepare for an interview, and then a quick few do's and don'ts, and some frequently asked questions. I'll also be giving some generic tips and tricks related to how you prepare for an interview, how you go to uh, an interview, and some specific to the life insurance side. All right. Uh, would anybody like to volunteer and say what exactly is the need for an interview? Because uh, before that, we already send in a CV or a resume, which already contains all of the details required. So what is the need of an interview exactly? You can take any wild guesses. Uh, please don't type. I am not able to see the chat box. So quickly unmute and uh, speak a few words. Anybody? There's no wrong or right answer. You can feel free to. Uh, do we have a coordinator? If somebody's typing, can someone just let me know? Koshal, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. So if, if somebody's typing anything, can you quickly unmute and let me know? OK, OK. All right. All right, I'll quickly uh, let you guys know what exactly is the need of an interview. So first things first, it's the verification of data given in the resume. I do understand that we mention all of the details uh, to the best of our knowledge and truthfully. But the interviewer needs to verify whatever we've provided in the resume is correct. And he also wants to check or uh, you know, evaluate if we are fit for the job. So first is verification of data given in the resume. For example, if I mention that I've worked on modeling 
using GGY Access or Profit. So they're bound to ask questions on those topics to check if I actually have relevant knowledge required on those softwares, etc. cetera. Uh, next is evaluating communication and interpersonal skills. This is very important because although I've mentioned and I'm aware and I know everything, but I also need to have the ability to communicate and present it well to both an actuarial and a non-actuarial uh, audience. Uh, if you guys have appeared for the paper CP3, you must know that uh, actuaries tend to use technical jargons which are not easily interpreted by other uh, people, say finance team or uh, CAs, basically who are not actuaries. So they do not understand what reserving is, what uh, solvency is, etc. So we need to uh, com we need to be able to communicate those in layman terms, which is easily understandable by all. So that is something they also need to assess. And during the interview, they will always start with the very basic questions. For example, if you're preparing for an uh, interview in the life insurance domain, they'll, they'll ask definitely ask you questions on CT5 or CT1. That is your CM1 in the current uh, exam structure. So they'll ask you what, what is reserving, how do you calculate reserves for a company, etc. And you need to, although everybody has, uh, anybody who has studied or cleared CT1, CT5 slash CM1, they would be aware of the definitions, the formula, etc. But they need to be able to communicate it easily in layman terms to the interviewer, because that's what ultimately an actuary does. Uh, there's there's a reporting team wherein it's a mix of appointed actually the CEO, the CFO, etc. So not everybody is an actuarial audience. So that is something very important. Also interpersonal skills, wherein say you are uh, uh, you're applying for the post of a manager, uh, you'll also be interacting with the clients. So your interpersonal skills, you have to present. So all of that is evaluated via an interview, and a resume does not specify that. Next up, we have assessing cultural fit. So this is more specific uh, to, I would say, some industries and not all. For example, if you're working for a consulting, uh, you would all know that there's their flexible working hours, their flexible uh, work quality. Everything is flexible, and you can get a variety of work. So they also need to assess what kind of candidate they are hiring, if, if they're culturally fit for their company, if they're flexible in terms of working hours or in terms of working over the weekend if it's required. So that's something uh, the managers or the interviewers tend to assess during an interview. Moving on to uh, clarifying job expectation. This is a two-way process, I think. Uh, what happens is during an interview, the interviewee also is free and, and should ask a few questions to the interviewer. With that, we also, uh, suppose I'm the interviewee and you are the interviewer, I, I will definitely ask what is the job role and what am I expected to, although that is mentioned in the job description and I've read it before applying, I'll reiterate that and I'll check what am I expected to do once I join, if I join. And if that matches my expectations or my career goals, only then will I go ahead with the offer otherwise not and similarly for the interviewer they also want to assess what do we want and what are their requirements if those align only then will they take the candidature forward otherwise not so this is a must and a very good process this cannot be done via a resume i'll give you an example i applied for a job in a major life insurance company in uh, india uh, they were hiring for uh, pricing uh, basically, they were hiring in their pricing team. I do not have any pricing experience. Uh, they they required somebody who had a pricing experience. Although uh, the HR still called me that you can still go for the interview. Uh, they liked your profile, etc. And I went for the interview. I did not have any pricing experience. They, so they asked me relevant questions on the reserving experience that I had. But still, since it was a pricing job, I asked them if if I'll be expected to go for pricing, because that's not what my interest that's not where my interest lies, and their answer was yes, and and that was over there. So this is very important. Although some interviewers are flexible, like even though they open a position for pricing, they also hire for reserving if the candidate if they like the candidature, etc. So all of that is clarified only during an interview. So this this is very important. Um, next, we move to building uh, rapport and mutual trust. Again, like I mentioned, uh, you can have 
either a very good rapport built with the company, even though they hire you or not, they'll always remember you. And in future, when they have a vacancy or when they remember you, they'll reach out to you via LinkedIn or via HRs, etc. That is something, uh, again, a two-way process. The interviewee also finds uh, and judges the in the company based on how the interviewer presents himself Re because the interviewer is the representative of the company. So during the interview process, the one hour or the 30 minutes interview that you have, there's a mutual trust and rapport building session going on between the candidate and the company. So these are a few reasons why we uh, why an interview is required before taking forward a candidature. Next up, we move. Uh, are there any questions up until now? No, nothing till now. All right. Moving to the next uh, topic, that is interview preparation, for which we've all gathered this morning. Very basics. I'm sure uh, you all must be preparing right now. So can you please list down some steps that you take, you're taking or you have taken in the past to prepare for an interview? All right, I'll go. Uh, one, we have researched the company. Very, very, very important. Do not go unprepared about the company. Uh, for a fresher role, they'll ask you, why are you applying for this company among several other companies? Why do you want to join our company, etc.? And you must have an answer. They also tend to ask about uh, the recent financials, the recent public news about the company. For example, I'll give you my example. Four years back when I was interviewing for WTW, uh, back then there was a merger planned between uh, for WTW and Neon, if you guys know. So that was something I was asked about. So I think uh, researching about the company is very, very, very important before going for the, before appearing for the interview of that company. They tend to ask questions, both to freshers and experienced. For experienced people, they'll ask you why the switch and why this company. If you're leaving, say, X company for some reason, uh, how do you know that those problems are resolved and why, say, company Y that you're applying to? So researching, researching about the company is first and foremost very important step in the interview preparation. Second, we have understanding the role, like I just mentioned, before applying for the interview or before sending in your resume. We tend to read the job description and align with our expectations of the job or our career goals. Uh, if you do not understand anything, uh, you can feel free to ask it during the interview. So based on whatever you have mentioned in your CV or resume, they'll ask you questions. But based on whatever they have mentioned in the job description, you can also ask questions uh, relating to the job uh, role that's currently provided during the interview. Next up, we have practice common interview questions. Uh, definitely, you cannot go unprepared, like I told. Researching the company is one thing. That will be maybe one out of 10 questions that will be asked during the uh, interview. But practicing common interview questions, uh, gen since most of the audience today is fresher, uh, generic questions that you'll be asked is, why did you choose actuarial science as a career option? Um, uh, what, where do you see yourself in the next five years? What is your career progress? How many exams have you cleared? What made you choose actuarial science? And what made you apply for this company? What are your career uh, aspirations? Uh, if you've cleared, say, CM1, CM2, they'll ask whatever you've mentioned, uh, clearing, say, CM1, CS1, CM2, CS2, or whatever papers you've mentioned, you'll be asked technical questions on those papers. If you do not have any papers cleared, you have uh, say your undergrad degree or postgrad or whatever you have mentioned, you'll be asked based on that. So you must practice some common interview questions. You have a lot of resources available online. If anybody wants anything, you can reach out to me directly. I can help you with these uh, common interview questions. Um, that's on it. They also, so they, there are different rounds for, so 
there are different procedures for different companies for say wtw there were different rounds so one was the hr round then was the technical round and then there was a director's round so in hr round you'll be asked basic questions like tell me about yourself what are your strengths and weaknesses how do you see yourself etc we all know what an hr interview is then we have a technical round where you'll be grilled on various questions depending on the job role you apply for uh my technical round went on for about 2 2.5 hours that is the usual that was the usual time for ww back then and uh, they'll they'll go in depth to the starting from very basics to the very complex questions if they pick a topic so that is what happens and you can reach out to uh, different people working in the company you are applying to for example you are applying for ipro you can reach out to somebody from link uh, from ipro via linkedin and you can ask them what are the type of questions how how long does the interview uh, take and uh, what are, what all you'll be expected to know to answer etc so so that is something that you should always prepare in so we have quickly covered the agenda that's it and we had what's the need and then we have the interview prep we covered research the company understanding the role practicing common interview questions and we were at asking insightful questions like i also mentioned in what's the need uh, we have to clarify expectations two way uh, it also leads leaves a very lasting impression on the interviewer if you ask good good questions say uh, about the company what are you expected to do how is the cultural environment in the company etc that uh, that helps you get the uh, job offer so this is a very important step and mostly for all the interviews that have appeared till date every interviewer has asked me if you have any questions and that is the time when you ask your questions instead of interrupting the interviewer in between so this is towards the end of the process these moving on to some basics which i'm sure everybody knows uh, practicing good body language with that i mean uh, you should make eye contact you should have a good posture you should always uh, speak confidently uh, you should not panic and uh, rush to answering questions uh, take a deep breath if you're not able to answer if you are feeling panicky stop take your time think and then answer it is always it always does more harm than good if you rush into answering to uh, just let the interview complete his question and you just instantly start responding instead it's always better to take a pause think about the question if you do not follow it you can easily ask the interviewer to repeat his question and then you can answer whatever you feel is correct or incorrect answering confidently even if you are uh, unsure makes the interviewer uh, believe that you're trying and you you know things and lastly we have follow up uh, once the interview is complete i would say within a time span of like after few hours to one day or two days a couple of days within a couple of days you should follow up with the interviewer either via linkedin or via the hr or via the email whatever is uh the process that you were using before the interview you should always use that uh, to follow up and check on how your interview went and how how did you perform during the interview when can you hear back from the company etc so these were some quick uh, steps that you should follow uh, for an interview preparation these were very generic not specific to the life insurance sector we'll move on to what are the insur life insurance specific uh, steps that you should take for preparation before that are there any questions all right uh for life insurance specific we have first a uh, deep dive into life insurance products and terminology for all those who have appeared or cleared ct1 ct5 or cm5 you would be aware of all life insurance uh, products terminologies etc and if that's mentioned in your resume and you're applying for the role in a life insurance domain be ready to be asked questions on any life insurance product any terminology etc and they can go into any depth starting from basics to very complex products how a product is modeled what are the cash flows relating to it etc like i told uh, starting from what do you mean by reserves master the actuarial maths and stats you will also have to know what are the 
you will also have to know what are the calculations required in uh, calculating the reserve. You should. I'm sure everybody knows the formula for calculating reserves. They. I was asked to write the formula in a pen and paper and show over the video interview. So this is something that you might be asked if you're applying for the life insurance uh, job role, basically. Next up, we have be prepared for technical questions and case study. Give it, again, giving the example of CM1, CM2, CS, basically whatever papers you've cleared. Be prepared to ask technical questions on all, all of those. Uh, for life insurance, you might be asked anything starting from modeling, reserving, what are the assumptions that you use, what is the data, how can you perform some checks on the data, uh, what, what all are the assumptions that an actuary uses. Basically, uh, for insurance sector and as an actuary, we have most of the things that are uncertain. And uncertainty requires making a lot of assumptions. And when you make assumptions, uh, you require some analysis. So for that, uh, you, you need to be prepared, basically understanding key assumptions and sensitivity analysis. Uh, can somebody quickly volunteer and tell me what are the few assumptions that we make for a life insurance model? Very basic. If you've uh, read or appeared for CT1, CT5, or CM1, you would be aware. Fixed interest rate. Right. Interest rates, right. Very important and very uh, key assumption. And? Mortality rate. Right. Good. What else? OK, I'll quickly take an example of a life insurance product, for example, an annuity product. Uh, so annuities uh, pay out on survival. So you will also need survival probabilities. You need persistency rates, that's lapse rates. Then uh, you'll need interest rates, right? like someone rightly mentioned. Mortality rates is obviously there. Uh, we also need. Um, Lapse rates, surrender rates, because there are some uh, surrender values uh, provided. So these are the basic assumptions uh, that's required. And all of the assumptions are determined by actuaries. Next up, we have staying updated on industry trend and regulatory changes. Very, very, very important. I think this is also covered in a few of my next slides. I say this because uh, if you're not updated, they'll feel that you're not uh, determined or you're not, you're not committed towards the profession. Uh, you do not want to learn and you do not want to take this forward. So they can ask you questions, anything related to current affairs, basically on life insurance or anything relevant to, to the actuarial field. So for example, right now, if you're all aware, uh, there's a new regulatory regime that's been introduced called IFRS 17 in the S117. So that is something uh, that's a hot topic right now. So everybody, everybody who is working on the life insurance, life insurance or general insurance, basically all insurance companies have been shifting to IFRS 17, and you should uh, have relevant knowledge. And if if you're an experienced and if you're applying, looking for job change right now, you'll see a lot of job uh, description mentions relevant IFRS 17 knowledge or experience. So uh, if you do not stay updated, if you do not have the relevant knowledge, you won't be uh, fit for the job. They also tend to ask, how do you stay updated on industry trends and regulatory changes? So you can mention uh, like you have 
you've been following some newsletters you have some subscriptions uh wherein you quickly browse through uh, these industry trends daily or you listen to some podcasts you can mention the um, famous ones or you can follow some actual groups there are quite a lot these days either on linkedin or instagram or whatsapp so you can use these means uh, to stay updated and there's obviously uh, institutions like actu uh, actu actuators educational institute and others if you are an experienced working in a company i'm sure there's a whole repository based on these uh, knowledge shares wherein you can uh, go and read all documents all standards etc whatever you want to build up your knowledge on the relevant topic so information is available everywhere it's uh, you who have to ask for it if you're not able to find it and read it yourself to equip yourself with the relevant knowledge that was it on uh, industry trends and regulatory changes moving on to showcasing soft skills relevant to actuarial world uh, i when i took the session on cv building i'm sure uh, if if there's a common audience if you've attended that there was a section on soft skills and also on software skills so here soft skills we include both interpersonal skills software skills etc but i also meant to include software skills which means uh, for example i mentioned before relevant knowledge on profit gty access ms of ms uh, word ms office ms powerpoint whatever is required to the relevant job you always have to tailor your cv based on the job that you are applying for for example i'm applying for a modeling role in a company say abc and that uh, role requires an experienced personal in uh, gjy access but i do not have any experience so either i need to learn or if i do have knowledge i need to mention it and if i'm learning i can mention i've done a course on so and so but i do not have any experience on working it with it uh, but i haven't applied the relevant knowledge i'm happy to uh, learn and grow with your organization or if i have relevant knowledge and experience i'll mention it on my cv and i tend to elaborate and discuss more on it because i have the relevant skills and knowledge required for the job so that is how you land the job uh, when the expectations and your um, your performance matches and aligns is when you get the job again uh, i don't want to repeat myself asking insightful questions was something that we covered in the basics uh, last we have conveying enthusiasm for life insurance as a career path since we are discussing life insurance specific uh, tips and tricks so you have to, so what what happens is uh, i'll take my case when i was interviewing for ww i was asked right on spot if i want to go with life insurance or general insurance it might or might not be the case for you so if you already have something in mind for example uh, you have to you have a strong inclination towards life insurance or you have a strong inclination towards general insurance you can specify and you can give your reason why you chose that but if you do not you can specify that or that as well i'm open to both and whatever i like etc if there is a specific role for say general insurance or say life insurance you will be asked why life or why general insurance so since we are covering life insurance today i'll give you some examples uh, when i was asked i i at that time i was just appearing for ct1 ct5 these subjects and i really liked the subject ct5 uh talking about reserves pricing the life insurance products the calculating mortality uh, death probabilities lapse rent etc whatever i like the con context the subject and that is what i uh, told them also uh some things that they might counter on is a uh, life insurance project goes on for a little longer whereas general insurance as you would know are short term projects and you get variety to work on so you'll have to show them that you're committed towards life insurance and this is the reason why you chose life insurance as your career option and only then will they be convinced that you're okay and you will take it forward so this is very important and this starts towards the end for example in the directors round um i think we've covered most of it and if there are any questions i'm happy to take before i move on to some basics again ma'am actually as a fresher how can we really know which uh, field or which domain should we choose about like right. you told about insurance and general we are right. still very confused. good question 
very good question uh, so you have to first list down your priorities your likings and what are your uh, future goals and aspirations by that i mean like i just mentioned you'll have to talk to the relevant people either working in the life insurance side or on the general insurance side actually both only then you'll be assess, able to assess what are the pros and cons of both life insurance and general insurance uh, then you'll have to see what matches your uh priorities basically for example i told um for life insurance you'll write that there are longer term projects and you stick to a project for more than a couple of years say for five years at least and for general insurance you get to work on variety because you have short term projects and the projects quickly uh you keep switching on projects very quickly so you will have to decide like i told i subject ct5 interested me and which is why i chose life if there's somebody uh, who's read more on general insurance or sp7 or spa or anything say for that matter you you think you'll get bored in a longer term project and you need variety anything like if you've taken a mobile insurance and that is something that interests you or if you have a business your family has a business and that they've taken a trade uh, fire insurance or anything and you're keen on learning the pricing the reserving of the fire insurance product is when you'll choose a general insurance so these are some basics but of course you'll not get the in depth knowledge the experience and the know how to choose so uh, initially you do not, you do not get to choose uh, you start but if at all say you joined as a in a life insurance domain but you're not liking it it's too monotonous or you're not enjoying calculating death properties dealing with life insurance products on a daily basis you might switch to general insurance then if you are if you have that options for example if you're working for a consultancy but if you've already moved to a life insurance company uh, it might be difficult is when you have to switch companies altogether so very rightly asked you'll not know everything but you need to do the background research before going for the interview so that is something that you can do uh, for example i do have friends working in the general insurance domain and they they absolutely do not like the stability and uh, the stagnancy for some years and they'll have to work with a company or a project for more than 2 years so th that is when uh, the method of elimination comes in picture so life insurance is eliminated and then they went on to try for general insurance this is something you can do as a fresher obviously research talk to people working in the life insurance domain talk to people working in the general insurance domain list down uh, see what matches what what's of your like and interest and go forward with that area uh, is that answered do you have any further follow up no ma'am thank you no problem any other questions ma'am ma'am yes uh, ma'am uh, if i am applying to life insurance company then what type of questions uh, gonna ask from subject cs1 or will they ask question from cs1 so if you've cleared cs1 definitely you will be asked questions on cs1 and cs1 is not a life specific subject so even if you are applying for a general insurance or a non insurance cs1 is a stats paper which is used throughout be it economic capital be it investment alm opportunities cs1 is a vast and a wider topic and it might be asked but only if you have covered or if you have relevant stats background say for example if you are a graduate in statistics they might ask you questions on that okay thank you uh some examples of questions that i was asked from cs1 is uh, i was asked to draw the graph of normal distribution and state the log normal distribution uh functioning so very basic questions might be asked as well as complex questions might be asked depends on what role you are applying for and what are your qualification based on that role so if there's for, someone for life insurance or yes so like i just told i applied for uh, i rightly i abruptly told them that i am interested in the life insurance although i was interviewing for life insurance i was asked this one questions okay thank you no problem any other questions ma'am what are the basic software skills that need to have as a fresher 
yes very good question uh, as a fresher and if you have cleared the core technical papers that is the cm1 cm2 cs1 cs2 i think you'll already have covered your uh, excel and r but uh, with your graduation you're also expected to know the basics of excel r some programming languages like python or power bi i'm not telling that you need to be an expert you can be a beginner or an intermediate but need, but you need to have some experience or have worked on these ms office suit is obviously you must have uh, you'll make presentations time and again word definitely content uh, we we so actually is don't just work on excel or don't just do mathematical calculations after that they also prepare a report if somebody who has appeared or cleared cp2 cp3 papers they would know uh, they also prepare reports that are presented to the board uh, at the insurance companies so for that you need to have that uh, so word and communication skills ms office is a must python i mentioned are you already learn if you've cleared cs1 cs2 if not you should know the basics because these are some uh, software that, that are used on a day to day basis even if you do not know a lot and you're learning you can express that during the interview for example uh, i i appeared for cs1 uh, at the time when r wasn't there so basically ct3 so i wasn't uh, equipped with knowledge in r but i did prepare uh, i was doing a course in coursera or udemy on r and i did mention it in my interview although i do not have the relevant knowledge but i am learning and that leaves a good impression uh, i think so you can do that as well is that answered yes ma'am thank you no problem any other questions taking silence as a no i'll move ahead uh some basic do's and don'ts during an interview i think everybody is aware researching the company we have just discussed uh, dress appropriately is very very important although it is even though it is a virtual interview if you are appearing for an in person interview definitely you will wear uh, either of western or uh, eastern formals both are appropriate uh, but also for a virtual interview dressing appropriately is very very important be punctual uh, you should always appear before time if you have read some job descriptions or interview invites the agenda they mention please join the meeting before 5 uh, minutes before the scheduled time so that is something you should uh, keep in mind first impressions keep a uh, keep are last are a lasting one so never ever be late uh, they do not want to hear your story even though it's true try and reach the place uh, at least 20 minutes before so that you can uh, settle yourself you can be ready before you actually go into the interview room similarly for virtual interviews join the call try to join the call before 10 minutes at least 10 minutes before uh, because there might be some joining issues there might be some issues in the link that they've provided you might not be able to join the host might not be able to let you in so all of these needs to be checked before and uh, only if you join 10 minutes ahead of the call this can take place if you join the call just in time uh, you might suffer so please please be punctual uh, showing some enthusiasm and positivity like i told always have a smiling face always show that you are uh, interested for the job show that keenness to get the job uh, if if you are an experienced person uh, you should never ever talk uh, negatively about your previous employer always always be positive uh, that leaves a good impression expressing confidently we've just discussed and getting feedback on your performance is what i discussed when we were talking about follow up in the earlier slides so these are very basics i think everybody is already aware moving to to the don'ts which are more important than the do's don't arrive unprepared we discussed when we were talking about researching the company also preparing for uh, some mock interview questions actually based on actuarial uh 
don't lie this is uh, this i have also mentioned a lot of times in my cv building sessions you should never ever ever lie in your resume as well as the interview because the interviewer gets to know either today or tomorrow or after joining when they get to know they have the power to uh, terminate you immediately so never ever lie about anything uh, this reminds me we did not discuss uh, salary expectations that's also discussed during an interview when talking about salary we tend to mention a range and not a figure uh, for freshers mostly the salaries are mentioned on the job description or you're already aware if if it's coming via your college placements through pre placement talks etc if not via linkedin or uh, any other source you can feel free to ask uh, it to the hr before applying but during the interview uh, don't try to avoid asking what are the salary that they're offering what's the salary that they're offering this can be asked offline to the hr but if the interviewer asks you what are your salary expectations be blunt be truthful and specify a range for example if you're a fresher uh, you can mention somewhere around 6 to 8 lakhs per annum but if you're in experienced you can say uh, this so and so is my current ctc and i am expecting a 40% hike to my current ctc this is this was just an example you can mention whatever suits you but don't lie about your current ctc don't lie about your expectations don't lie about your uh, anything apart from salary as well uh cool that's it uh moving on to don't speak negatively about your previous employers i just uh spoke about this when we were discussing showing enthusiasm and positivity speaking negatively about previous employers deters the interviewer from hiring you uh that that is taken as a very very strong negative point so don't ever mention it even though you might have some negative points to talk about your previous employers the current interview is not the place where you discuss it uh you can give other reason they'll ask you why are you switching or what is the reason you choose our company you can give any other reason except for talking negatively about your previous employer moving on to don't interrupt the interviewer i think i mentioned this again i mentioned this before if you have any questions ask towards the end of it or for example if there's a in, uh, puzzle or a guess estimate wherein uh, you're trying to solve it's not about the right or the wrong answer that you give it's about the direction how do you get to it what is your thought process how do you approach the problem is what they check so what happened during my interview back then was they were asking me a puzzle and they also asked me to list down the steps and take me through what i was doing and i was uh, calling out loud and uh, writing on my pen and paper so they were also helping me lead to the answer uh although this is not what we expect from the interviewer but that's how they did it and that's how i i landed up the, at that job so also when they're helping you uh, interpret the question at hand or the problem at hand don't interrupt them right there when they are done ask them the question then or towards the end of the interview for example i couldn't solve one of the puzzles and then towards the end i asked them uh, can you please uh, give me provide the solution for that puzzle that i couldn't solve after the call after the interview is over and i did get the answer so you should always uh, always ask after the interviewer is done with his or her uh, words don't overshare personal information like this tends to happen when they ask about your career gap reasons for switching and anything if you are uh, trying to share draw a line know where to stop don't overshare personal information that's not expected that's not appreciated you need to have that professional and personal uh, li line wherein you need to know what is to be shared and what is not to be shared don't look at your phone or watch very very important i think again this is a very basic everyone knows already uh, looking at the watch makes them think that you're not interested and you're uh, looking forward to the interview interview getting over again looking at your phone makes you just dis look distracted and the interviewer does not appreciate uh with this we come to the end of do's and don'ts are there any questions before i move on to some frequently asked questions
all right moving on to the final topic uh for today's discussion that is faqs or some frequently asked questions these are the four broad categories i could come up with uh that that uh, an interviewer bases his questions on so one is your general career related these are either asked towards the start of the interview or towards the end of the interview wherein you will be asked questions like why did you choose a career in actuarial science what are your long term goals as an actuary how do you stay updated with changes in actuarial standards or regulations etc so they want to understand your mindset towards the profession or towards the career in this you might also be asked uh, what is your exam progress uh, how many papers did you clear in the past one year what did you learn in the past one year etc uh moving on to the technical questions uh definitely uh, in an actual interview you will be asked a lot of technical questions if you just if you have just one interview round for any of the companies that is a mix of hr general uh puzzles guesstimates etc and technical so consider 80% of it will be technical but again it depends on the company uh, most of it most of the times it happens that when i was appearing for uh, actual interviews during college placements so all of the interviews that i gave had uh, 80% of it was technical and some very basic like general career related or hr questions uh, but be very very strong on your concepts focused on what technical questions you might be asked go prepared uh like i just mentioned uh, fs 17 is coming into picture they might ask you a question related to that what is the difference this this is more relevant for an experienced person than fresher but a fresher might be asked what do you think is the role of an actuary i was asked this during my interview at wtw so these are some questions that you should go prepared with uh this is not an exhaustive list the list is endless there are a variety of sources available i'm sure online you can use sources like chat gpt you can use youtube you can use linkedin you can reach out to people via linkedin you can uh, take the help of uh, coaching institutes uh, professionals etc uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or if you want to know the questions that are asked uh, but within the current time i i may not be able to list down more questions right now uh next up we have some analytical questions uh for example how would you project future cash flows for a life insurance product again like we're discussing life insurance so this is more specific to life insurance what are the checks you'd perform on a data set uh when we talk about data set you'll be given anything for example for a life insurance company a data set comprises of the policy holders their age their gender their uh, payouts their uh, if it is a joint life or not what are the options that they have chosen during the policy if it is ulip or not etc and then you need to perform some checks on those data sets so you will you'll ha- you might be asked what are the checks you'd perform and this is a very basic question this is uh, a good question that's asked in most of the interviews uh finally we have behavioral how do you handle uncertainty at work including guest guess estimates and puzzles like i told uh there's no r- wrong or right answer but they want to see how you approach the problem when they ask guesstimates and puzzles so this is very important for freshers i've seen actuarial non actuarial life insurance non life insurance all of the interviews uh, there were either one or two guest guesstimates and either one or two puzzles that were asked in most of the interviews so prepare these are very easily available online prepare these before you appear for the interview and a lot more there's no end to the list of questions but these were some basics that i have faced finally uh, we come to the last end of the session and this is the last slide in my presentation some general tips and tricks emphasize on exam progress and commitment to professional development very very important for an actual interview they need to know that you are committed towards the profession as you would all know um, actuarial profession is a tough one you need to stay committed and focused uh, there comes a time when you do not clear exams and people tend to uh, step back and drop think and they start thinking about dropping actuarial sciences or career option is when the interviewer wants to know whether uh, you'll stay committed or whether you'll sw- switch quickly so you need to emphasize on uh, your exam progress and your commitment towards the actuarial science profession uh, 
connect with people from the relevant field or company like i told you you can have connections uh, in multiple ways reach out to people on linkedin from uh, different companies reach out to hrs uh, you can write them on their emails you can make connections via sources like uh, we have some clubs some uh, communities like the actual community we have we have some uh, common groups on whatsapp like we have a few for uh, aei and there are various different ways wherein you can connect with people there is no end to it but stay connected with people from your field uh, try and meet their expectations uh, like i told uh, you will read the job description before going for the interview and for example they require somebody experienced in experience investigations or experience modeling but uh, you only have experience in reserving and you have not done experience investigations so they might not choose you for the role so only if they when your goals and their expectations meet is when you get the offer so try and meet their expectations in the sense uh, when i told if if there's a must requirement for a programming language like say r it's very easy and quick you can learn it via your cs1 cs2 subjects or you can also do a small crash course and you can equip yourself with it before going for the interview and uh, yeah this will help you land uh, your dream job finally we have prepare for guesstimate scenario based questions and puzzles that we just discussed in the previous slide nothing uh, more that i can add on with this uh, we come to the end of the session uh, right in time but i'm happy to take questions if any ma'am how many papers did you completed by your graduation uh i think i cleared five or six papers six papers i think and and don't go behind the numbers it's absolutely not required i'll tell you from my experience and this is relevant for most of the companies for freshers uh, i'm assuming you are a fresher for freshers uh whatever are the number of papers you have cleared beat 1 2 2 6 or 0 from 0 to 6 anything it does not matter if you have mentioned one exam that you cleared that is same one it's what matters most is you should know the in depth concepts and uh, textbook whatever cm1 provides instead of if you have cleared six papers and you do not know anything from either of the subjects or the basic cs1 cm1 that does not help i mean don't consider yourself uh, as a lesser priority if you have not cleared papers and the interview might go for somebody who has cleared more papers this is a myth this is not true so wtw hires uh people with zero papers as well and people with n number of papers as well so that although that is a consideration to ask questions during the interview that is not a top notch criteria for choosing a candidate okay ma'am thank you no problem ma'am for example i have an interview next week and i cleared cs1 in april 23 so it's quite a long time uh, from it so how can i revise for it uh, right now because i don't really remember much of the concepts in depth so i think i will suggest uh, back then uh, when i was applying as a fresher and i had cleared these papers only ct1 ct5 ct3 uh, so you should quickly brush up your concepts uh, go through whatever is relevant go through the summary pages and i'm sure when you go through it you will remember most of it right now you have you might be feeling blank and uh, absolutely lost that i do not know anything but when you flip through the pages and when you read the summary notes for each chapter i'm sure you'll remember that is why i say always uh, prepare in advance so right now i'm assuming you are in your final year and you are appearing for interviews so now is the time in your last semester is when you start revising your concepts for interviews so i'll give you an example uh, cs2 has machine learning i believe and i appeared for an interview in my final year wherein i was asked about machine learning and i had no clue absolutely is when i lost that job offer so definitely definitely revise on whatever is mentioned in the job description whatever that company has for whatever subjects you have mentioned in your resume uh, don't go and prepare you can be asked anything All right, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. No problem.
ma'am yes ma'am uh, the hr of a company they receive a lot of cvs so how do we make our cv stand out from the rest of the cvs that they receive yes so in your i think uh, i'm not sure if you have already attended there are quite a couple of recordings available on cv building session you can refer to those but you should uh, some basic quick quick pointers i'd tell you is you should always mention whatever relevant uh, knowledge you have starting from your software skills to your soft skills to your technical skills uh, all the papers that you have cleared and you're confident about you should mention that internships that you have worked and it should be relevant for example if you have done done an internship in an audit field or a finance field which is not relevant to actual although you mention it they'll not ask about it or that that's not relevant that that becomes redundant so you have to include all relevant information in your cv and you should always tailor your cv specific to the job that you are applying for for example i'll tell you so currently i have a cv wherein i have written all my experience based on whatever i have worked on but if i apply for a job uh, wherein the requirement is for an experience modeling expert i have some experience but i'm not an expert i won't be able to uh, answer all questions they ask on experience modeling so i have it uh, written somewhere below uh, beginner beginner level experience or uh, not proficient not an expert in this so and so uh, i tell you this because you will definitely be asked Uh, questions and you might be grilled on that. I was done once, so avoid that. Don't lie on your resume, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Write write some achievements if you have any. Uh, be it in your college or be it in your internship, if if any. I think that's about it. Uh, for more details, you can refer to the recording on CV building, and you can reach out to me separately. I have a sample CV I can forward to you. i can also vet your cv if you want but i don't think uh, there is a set um, process uh, it's just that basically they've mentioned say for example some companies like i told you hire with zero to n number of people but there are some companies which require for example there's a life insurance company in india that's hiring a fresher but there is a requirement that uh, cm1 cleared Uh, cm the candidate should have cleared paper cm1 cm2 etc so you should definitely mention if you have cleared it and you should brush through your concepts yeah that is how they shortlist if their uh, requirements and your what you are offering matches okay ma'am thank you and uh, i i forgot to mention don't boast about yourself your achievements right to the uh, truest possible knowledge for example i had mentioned a uh, beginner level in r because i was in proficient in r so you should mention the integrities so that to avoid unnecessary talk during the interview yeah that's it any more questions All right then we are just in time uh thank you guys for joining on a sunday morning i hope this was useful and please feel free to reach out to me via linkedin or via email